Evening. Welcome to Negrosio Township Community Recreation Commission meeting, December 15th, 2011. Uh, before we start, Bill Morrow would like to say something. I just wanted to mention that in all the years we give the Pledge of Allegiance, we always make the same mistake by saying uh, one nation, comma, under God. In the Pledge of Allegiance, there is no comma. It's one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I, I just think we ought to say it the right way. With that being said, Bill will lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> I think that pause comes naturally. All right, thank you. No comment. Okay. Um, approval of tonight's agenda. Can I have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Uh, by any additions, deletions, or otherwise changes? So moved. Memorial, second. Um, I will. We got a second down there. From Mike. All those in favor say aye. 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 Approved. Okay, approval of the minutes from October 27th, 2011. Um, anyone make any changes? Uh, and uh, hopefully they gave them already to. Uh, to Leah, any additions, deletions, or changes, please? I did notice one. I apologize. I didn't. I just noticed it now. Could I just make a correction to the minutes before they're approved? Absolutely. On page two, when I made my report for the marina, the dock master's name is Bob Lang, L-A-N-G. I just wanted his name, Bob Lang, to be correct. It's a little different in the notes, so. He's a great dock master, and I just like his name correct in the minutes. So noted. Thank you. And um, uh, Ethel sent me some extensive. Um, uh, Ethel Yap sent me a um, uh, more detailed report about the um, senior citizen activities, uh, the senior club activities, and I have corrected those already in the minutes. Okay, with that being noted then, uh, please a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. Ethel, second please. Second. And, got and uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. Okay. So, Elena. All right. Public comment. Three minute limit on not agenda items. Anyone would like to address the commission on a not agenda item? Nope. Okay, moving on. Chairperson's report, the update on the Equestrian Center operating agreement. All right, I've been a little bit MIA, Tim. What kind of um, headway have we made in this area? Um, I talked to Dale uh, a couple days ago. He wants to try to get that finalized, get back with Rob and get that finalized over the next two to three township board meetings. Okay. You know, and I've been in contact with Rob. I had a good chance to look it over, but I'm waiting for Walt and Dale to, you know, have time to do that. And... Uh, just real surface conversation with Rob, but then real good between, you know, the two people that are in charge of the facilities over there, himself with the equestrian center and me with the overall farm. All right. So. <clears throat> Barring just those questions where when you and I initially said that we want to start the negotiations and we talked to, to, to Rob, he then took what we um, had to his lawyer. I never even seen none come back yet. Did you get a copy of that Yes. Yet? Yep. It was passed. It was passed. It was passed to Yes. Me? Okay. I have to look at my email. Okay. Okay. And I've gone, you know, gone over it with Dale. So we hope in the next, by the next two to three board meetings, Dale said he'd like to get it finalized. Okay. But as of right now, everything's good then? From an operational standpoint, I'm very pleased uh, how things Okay, water are. bill, we're all cool with that now? Yes. Okay, we're all up and stuff like but that. But he had some legitimate concerns on that. Right, so. but we already handled that already because of the trash pickup or dumpster pickup, stuff like that. Just so everyone's aware he was paying for something that he was doing on the side private, privately. So he was getting billed through the... Uh, Water and sewage department. There were just some things that needed to be ironed out. Okay. Yes. All right. Any questions about the equestrian center? No. Okay. All right. Moving on. Girls Hill Parkway and East River Road ending. Um, Uta, please. Thank you. Well, I, I just want to report, as you can see on the overhead, um, tonight was the first of two public input sessions on the new waterfront uh, park that the township um, was able to acquire from Wayne County. Uh, 
I just want to reiterate for the public and uh, all that were present that there are no current plans in place, uh, no commitments have been made, and that we are genuinely seeking public input, public ideas. What do people in the community foresee as a use for that park? What are their concerns? We had a very good turnout this evening. We took quite a few comments. And we will be doing so again on January 26, 2012. I can't believe it's going to be 2012. Uh, again, from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, at our board meeting on Monday night, uh, Peter Kantz, who is a township trustee and also on the board appointed steering committee, has made himself available to um, host a visit to the site. Uh, people uh, had um, several days to come and see the site, but they were also very rainy times. And so he is making himself available. So if you have not yet had a chance to go um, visit the site and you'd like to take a look at it, um, contact um, Peter Kantz and he'll be happy to work out a site visit with you. Um, our main concerns with the site are safety right now and security. The first part of the cleanup has taken place. The stairs that lead down to the site are in bad repair and are extremely steep. Uh, the police have posted a sign and a gate, uh, no trespassing. <coughs> So we want people to realize that, that this is right now uh, not easily accessible and we want them to be careful and to not access the site unless they've worked something out with either Dale or Peter or, or the police or so forth. And uh, that's it. So on the 26th, <coughs> excuse me, we'll have another public input session and then Dale Reum foresees in March <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. All right. <coughs> All right, thank you. All right, I just want to add, too, that um, as far as the public input like this, we can take it, but uh, we can pass it along to the, the steering committee. But recreation is not in charge of, uh, of this development, you know, as of right now. But, I mean, Tim, you would have no problem if somebody contacted you to pass along the information to the correct people, right? Exactly, yeah. I'm a, we, I serve on the steering committee. So okay, so would be. And he's on the steering committee. Okay, so, all right, thank you very much. All right, Recreation Director's Report. Tim, you got a few things to update us on, starting with the facility, please? Yes, yeah, some of the commissioners have updates that they've been working hard on. I just, real briefly, the, the marina, I think, Mike, Mike, you agree, went, the closing went real well. And to, yes. from, from uh, staff point, uh, Mark Tiso has a real good control on that, winterizing it and getting it prepared. There is a water hydrant that cracked but we closed it down we're going to fix that first in the, you know in the spring the new budget year it's it's okay right now i had it you know checked out talking about the walkthrough what you guys discovered already we, we haven't had the walkthrough you have not had we're hoping to have that this week but okay. we will have it um so that, that's one item that needs to be fixed immediately and not to get too much into all the facilities um brian and mark have been working pretty heavily on the wait, wait before you start that the, you said fire hydrant not a fire hydrant, it's a uh, phosphate water hydrant. Okay. Yeah, okay. and it okay. cracked during the summer sometimes, so we, we caught on to that, and we will take care of that first okay. thing, but it's shut down and protected. Um, the golf course equipment, um, Brian and Mark have been working on Brian stayed out there, Brian Pat, and is doing a lot of steam cleaning of the equipment so it can prepare for market going in January. Right now, Mark has been doing a little bit of work for DPS on, you know, some of their equipment, you know, preparing for winter trucks, that type of thing. So, I, and I think we're way ahead, but Bill will get into more of the how, how is that working for the recreation? I thought we talked, we got Mark on recreation full time. So are we losing, are we going to be saving some money by loaning them out to the DPS? Or how is that going to work budgetary? There, are, there was some hours um, this last pay period. We're just starting to get into a little bit of that. Um, the way the budget is structured, it's 60-20, uh, 60 waters, ed, or 60-20. It is 80-20. Um, yeah, I was trying to think if farm was in there. 80-20. Okay. And that's golf and uh, recreation being 20%. So for the winter months, are we? Are you talking? You're going to be having Mark at least a couple times, a couple days a week through the winter, or are you? Yeah, he's there for weeks at DPS. No, he's at at the Water's Edge site. Okay, he'll do any kind of extra work for DPS right there, where his equipment is. Okay, you know, like repairs and that. But 
Yeah, he's the majority of him is the water's edge site, right. about 20% recreation. Um, farm recently, we had some vandalism around the pond and herb garden. Um, got some good information on that, and we're working on that. Um, throwing some barrels into the pond and doing a little bit of damage to the herb garden. That's we'll talk about trash barrels? What kind of barrels? Yeah, trash barrels. And then some damage around the herb garden. Those ladies worked too hard to have that happen. How bad? Well, how bad was the herb garden, Tim? Um, I wasn't. Well, I don't want to rate it, but I mean, it was, they did some damage. So it, that, that shouldn't happen. If it's a little bit or a bunch, that shouldn't happen. I don't want to put a scale on it. But I hope you guys are happy that whoever did that. Um, that's about. Cause I know commissioners are going to talk about some of the facilities, but that's just some update what the staff is up to right now. All right. Okay. Any, anything else? The football field. We talk about facilities. The uh, practice field for uh, Gyra. I didn't know if Greg's going to touch on that, but um, I think we had one of our better years overall in that whole area there, um, as far as vandalism, damage, uh, the work that Carl Moore did. You know, our contractor. Mm -hmm. I don't think the fields have looked that good in a long time. I mean, we had a lot of rain, obviously, and then uh, Gyra did a real good job taking care of their area. Area. Last time we talked um, to the just general maintenance areas around the um, for the golf, uh, the restaurant building and stuff like that, the pro shops stuff like that. Did we? What did we get done there? Did we get everything that you wanted to get done for the season? We, as I said, we did get the painting done or the staining in the building all the way around. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, a couple of areas underneath where it's protected. We didn't, but all the outside has been completed. And then in the spring, we're going to start on the, the block, the stone. Right. Getting that, fixed. and now it's going to be time for the ice rink. Oh yeah, definitely ice rink. Carl is working his tail off. I mean, if you drive by there, I mean he's single-handed. He had a lot of people help move some of the uh, the boards, the boards over, but he uh, has been working almost every night, and he's raised some pretty good money. He's raised three thousand dollars already. So, if anybody would like to help Carl more with the ice rink, please, it'd be appreciated. He's a one-man building crew. <laughs> All right. Um, how are we doing with equipment? What does Mark and Brian say about equipment? How, did, how is everything holding up from the golf season and stuff like that? This is the winter we need to have Mark there and fix it because it's we because of budgets and different things. Not that we're that great off budget wise. It has to be done this winter. He needs to stay in there and you know get it ready to go. Okay, are, was it successful with the new lawnmower? Are they were happy with that? Yes, that's done. I think Bill will touch on that. Okay. But yeah, there's quite a bit of equipment. He has it itemized. I should have brought the list and okay. go. I can bring that at the next meeting so you guys know what's in there and what we're working on and you know what what the major problems are. All right. Any other questions about the facilities? Anybody? Um, John. Uh, parking lot. It was ready to go, but then it was too late. It's all funded, all approved, and the company on paper is guaranteed they'll do it first thing in the spring. When okay, so through. this makes it now, this is the second time we missed the opportunity now to get that yeah. parking lot done. And I, well, I was going to talk about, the, I could probably transition into the budget. Um, recent dealings with the Community Development Block Grant Program, it's much better in the last month or so, and the staff that they have is really good about getting back, and I see some, some money that we missed out last year in our senior area and ADA and those type of things uh, coming back to us. We were uh, shortchanged by about 16000 last year that really hurt our budget that we were, it was dedicated to. Um, we should be getting some of that back in addition to the 12 that we already got, the 16, and then next year the funding's in place, about 23,000. So it should make us whole per se then? I think, it's, I think it could really help our budget because we were shorthanded, you know, when Ann went over the audit, mm -hmm. it seemed worse than it was. Well, maybe it'll make this year a little better or close the gap that we're experiencing with, you know, all the rain on some of the other programs. But some good news and they're working hard there and it was just nice to have really positive, can-do kind of responses through emails and phone calls. I'm pretty excited about that. All right, with our budget now, we're on that item right now. Overtime was a success for you this season and stuff like that. You keep it to a minimum. We're all good with everything looking good. Well, as best I can. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, we had to have a lot of rain. I think when you look on the bottom line of where we budgeted for it through the different uh, funds, recreation, golf, I think it'll come in. I mean, it'll, you'll see it in different areas, but all together, I think we did a good job. All right. Have we, we're all set with our pricing for Christmas for golf and stuff like that? Yep, then? that's the good questions. Um, we have an ad coming out tomorrow in the paper, week before Christmas. It'll uh, talk about the option passes, non-limited, and there's some specials that people buy early. Mm -hmm. And I think they'll be pleased with uh, the rates 
Um, I think it's going to make us more competitive with the nine hole golf courses we deal straight on with. We just we have a lot of struggle um, with that, and the staff was very open from when the senior golfers and all of our leagues came in and people at, in the evening that go to other golf courses. That's where we see more of the new customer. They were educating us, and I think everybody listened. I think we're going to be more competitive the, with the volunteers' help. The course is looking great. So I'm, I'm really excited about the coming year for golf, even though we probably just broke the all-time record with rain this year. Today, probably. Does anybody know? I we're think half we're pretty damn close. Yeah, we're within half inch. Half inch. Yeah. So the, 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 the Trenton Tribune will have two back-to-back -back ads. That's a monthly paper of our golf fees. We want to really hit that market and we're getting some interest there. All right, can we get someone to get some costs? Okay, we talk about the big thing that we have right now, the big tickets on the item is going to be that boiler. The boiler. The boiler time is supposed to be the time to get it, correct? Right. right. All right, so have we done anything on that end of it? No. <coughs> okay. That November was the time, to, according to all the experts, to get that equipment ordered. So. That might be a project in the next couple of weeks. Okay. We have so the cost. And that's the boiler is going to be for the heated pool, you guys. What was the problem? The, the heated pool. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, we've got to get some pricing. I know we've got to figure out if, if we're going to have to go one year cold or something. I don't know. You know, and I don't know how we're going to do this, whatever. Right. I don't think it's going to be cheap. No, probably seven to 10000 I don't know. Somewhere okay. there. All right. Any budget concerns or questions for Tim? <laughs> All right, Tim, any program updates? Um, oh, I just want to check on the marina. A little bit of uh, the winter storage is going to be a little higher. Summer summer dockage is a little bit lower, but it's all going to come in around that $110,000 mark that we budgeted, so it's going to be almost right on the dime. So I think that's a very good sign that um, our marina maintained the customers. And this is just off the top of my head, and then talking to like Maggie and Annette, I think we're getting more calls for summer dockage. We we, we always give to about uh, January 14th for our current dock holders to respond, but we are getting a lot of calls. I'd be shocked if we weren't full. All right, well, we need to to uh, Mike uh, about the yeah. his thing. We talk about pricing and stuff too. Then, all right, anything else then in the budget? No, well, that's it. All right, program updates. Uh, programs. We've been very busy with holiday activities, <coughs> Island Glow. Um, we had the brunch with Santa. Um, programs are winding down for the holidays. As I went through the budget, I looked at, uh, we're pretty close on a lot of our figures for. Well, that's what I can do with that. Slide. Okay. Um, I think programs are going real well. Um, I think we're building again with the last few years that we're down. But um, once again, exercise programs are very popular. And we've been busy. Another thing we're real busy on is we have a lot of rentals and. A ton of community groups use our facilities. The farm is used constantly by sports associations and various groups. We spend a lot of time working with them, but that generates good things for the community. And how's it been with the cleanup after organizations use that stuff? We're not using too much of our manpower. They're cleaning up it. I think it's better. I think it's better. Yep. I mean, sometimes you got to keep a deposit to get the lesson learned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, any program yes. questions, comments, anybody? Any, any new programs you hear in your rec world there, Tim, that you're going to be coming out with? Um, right now we're working on some, but I'm, I'm not going to come out with that yet. I will. Oh, secrets, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I see how you are. We are. All right. Thank you very much, Tim. Yes. Okay, um, old business. The only thing I got on the list here is really the volunteer for the subcommittee for the kayak launch site. Bill, do you have any comments about that at all? Uh, the comment is, well, my comment is that I have been remiss in my duties as chair of that uh, subcommittee uh, only because I lost my computer and my Palm Pilot, so all the information I had is kaput. So I will be working, and uh, I have a list of the people that are going to be on my committee now. I've been making notes as to what areas we want to address, and I'm hoping to have a report ready. Uh, when will our next meeting be? Next year. Next, yeah, when? <laughs> what next year? What? January 26th. 26th? Yep. Okay. I will have. Um, I will have a prepper. Uh, a presentation ready for not only our meeting but for the uh, 
water park at the end of the uh, street. I will give that report there too. Uh, and I'm hoping we can have some very, very good information and feedback. So I will still be working with my group to address some of the issues and and get a good presentation put together. So I'll have it uh, early next year. One question, Bill. Now, I wasn't there at the last meeting, but um, how did this subcommittee even evolve? How, how, there was there, well, how did this take place? How did that take place is that we made a motion, remember, and we all voted on making a presentation to the township board, which I do intend to do. Okay. Uh, 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 but on that, well, I want to make the presentation to our, our committee here, the Recreation Department, along with the Waterfront Park people, because it's going to be uh, uh, sort of hand-in-hand. Hand. Some of the comments we heard tonight uh, will, will defray some of the thinking, I think, that, that has come up. And uh, once we get that done and make our presentation on the 26th, then the next uh, board meeting I will make a presentation to them based on the facts that we've been able to uncover and all the pros and cons. All right. Now, Lena, you were on that subcommittee with Cliff, and you guys did extensive research for these sites too already, right? right. So that should be very useful too for this. Yes. Sir. Right. Okay. All right. Any, uh, any other old business? Anyone? All right. Any new business? Uh, yes, sorry. I, I guess I just want to um, reiterate that the that the work that Leah and Bill are talking about is is not related to the the investigation and public input being taken for the waterfront park. Um, that this is a separate um, process. Okay, so we're just talking about a site mm -hmm. on Water's Edge property. Then is that what we're talking about? North what, or South or what? On, yeah, but okay. not 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 at all. The waterfront park at um, East River and Parkway. Right, just recreation property. We're just recreation about. property. Just, just water's edge. Okay. Just yeah. water's edge. Okay, exclusive that area. Okay. Again, people um, tonight were saying they hear all kinds of rumors, and I would just like to underscore that what we're doing with and for water's edge is a completely different project. Okay, thank <clears> you for <throat> clearing that up. All right, so uh, any new business? Anybody have any new business they want to <coughs> discuss? Involve? Anybody? Anybody? All right. Move no, on. no new business. <laughs> Subcommittee updates. Open space and greenways. Shelke, any updates with uh, your your subcommittee? Um, no, I don't really have an update. Just if, as you notice, walking or driving by any of the open space areas, uh, you see lots of fallen trees. And uh, I would just do my usual mantra about uh, if you're walking there, be safe because. Uh, I had a near miss on, was an open space project, but a tree, if I'd been two minutes, two seconds earlier, a tree would have fallen on my car. It, it was that fast. I heard the crack when I was parked and didn't know what was going on and then went out on the road and here's this tree across the road. So I just would like to urge people um, to be very careful about uh, walking and being in those open spaces. All right, thank you. Next is the golf committee. Moro? Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to, you, you, Leah, you talked about trees. Uh, we have had uh, some issues with trees on the golf course, and Tim informs me that the... There was the the four near the range. I think you thought there were more four near the range. Yeah. Yeah, those are the ones I was talking about. Uh, okay. What are we talking for what? Four dead ones? Four pine trees. Uh, all those pine trees, actually most of those on the island are dying of that disease that like the uh, ash borer and the uh, if I'm correct in assuming that they are scotch pines but uh, there's been many of those dying and all the nine that we had over there I think there's only four left or one left well the ones I were, was reporting to you there was four right in that general area just um, yeah. south of the range building yeah three of those were damaged by wind and yes. removed there's one still there yeah that's what I was reporting yeah. okay well uh, what we'll do in the springtime, as you all remember or may not remember, uh, I'll re remind you that we had 27 trees on the golf course that were taken down uh, at no cost to Grosse Hill uh, golf, golf Club or Water's Edge uh, Recreation. And uh, we were able to get five trees replanted 
which have all lived. They're all beautiful little trees, and we are hoping we can get some more donations and uh, get some trees back on the golf course to make it more beautiful and uh, and uh, cover up some areas that, that need to be uh, accessed uh, with, with trees for a lot of reasons. Uh, shortcuts on golf courses uh, always make a dangerous situation for the oncoming golfer. So we're working, we're looking for that. We're also working in that regard. Uh, next year, we, we our volunteers, the 29 volunteers we had this year have done an outstanding job. The grass cutters and, and Mark and, and his team on maintenance have, have done a, a miraculous job in maintaining the golf course. And we're ready to go in the spring. If God blesses us with uh, with what we had uh, as far as rain uh, this year, I hope we don't get it next year. Uh, and we also don't get the long duration of, uh, of a high heat. But that cost us a lot of rounds of golf. And uh, I think uh, I won't be able to give you a final number on whether we've made money or not this this past year. But uh, I won't get that number till. Uh, and does that final number in, in March. But we should be able to uh, come very close, I think, to breaking even or maybe lose just a little bit. But uh, we hope to make it up next year. And the year before, we made money, so it all balances out. Uh, just for your information, and I think Tim hit on it a little bit, uh, in the state of Michigan and, and the Midwest, this has been, uh, in Michigan, it's been the first or second highest year for rain accumulation, rain days and accumulation. So uh, that has hurt not only us, but I looked at the uh, information that we get from the industry of PGA, and they're telling us that the Midwest is down about 31% in rounds of golf played. So as you can imagine, 31% is is almost a, a, a full third of what we do. So we're hoping that uh, next year will be better. Um, we were able to uh, recover the pond. We have our pump and water going in the pond, and uh, it'll be nice and blue and beautiful next year on number nine. Uh, we're still not completed. I haven't completed our job on, on the pond on number three, which we were hoping we would have gotten some frost and hard weather so we could start dredging that out, but it's been so rainy and muddy that we won't be able to address that till next year at some time. Uh, we were able to level the tee box on number seven, which we've been trying to do for two years. We finally have that underway. Um, and our equipment worked real well this year, and I'm hoping Mark is going to be all set on the maintenance side of that. As you know, some of the equipment that we're using on a regular basis is from the 60s. And Mark and his team have done just a mag magnificent job of keeping that stuff going. And the lawnmower that we bought two years ago has worked beautiful in mulching up all the junk and leaves and all that stuff. So like I said, the golf course is really ready to go. And if Mother Nature smiles, we'll be ready to go in the spring. Um, I think that ends my report. How did the golf carts work out for this year when we got rid of a whole lot of them? Do we have any problems there? Because of the rain, we had no problem this year, right? Tim, you, you well, yeah, with the rain. Golf yeah, carts were down several thousand dollars from yeah. the rain. Uh, range went up when we added a dollar. It went up a couple thousand, which was interesting. <clears throat> well, I meant last year, golf carts, we got rid of them when the cold snap went over, and then we had, like, nice weather. We had no golf carts or something like this. We didn't have that problem at all. And we kept the golf carts, we, but it continued to rain. And continued yeah. to rain. So, we, you know, we uh, get, uh, what, what do you call it, uh, I can't even think of the expression. No bird in one hand is worth it. Yeah. It would have been a, a uh, bush. Yeah. Cause in effect, next year, get rid of the carts and the weather will be better. Yeah, it was a very <laughs> terrible <laughs> move. Uh, offer, so. <laughs> this year looked like an idiotic move by me. That's yeah. Yeah. So not keeping last year looked idiotic. So Any successes? Bill? I know, I'm okay. Any successes with any of the things that your committee came up with as far as uh, whole sponsorship or new package programs, anything like this, or anything like yeah, that? They, they worked out fairly well this year, but we also, in, in 2010, but we also find out that it seems like, uh, what we try to do is encourage the public to get their passes and everything early. Well, as soon as we publish what we're doing, 
the surrounding golf courses that try and compete with us try to undercut us. But I think we've done a good job this year, and I think we're going to stick with it. Uh, the price of gas and the price of travel and all the rest of it and the fact that we really have a neat, uh, relatively difficult course to play. Uh, women seem to like our golf course because it's not long, long, but it's, it's a very challenging course and it's in excellent shape. So I think people are willing to, to work with us and stay with us. We're trying to be competitive and whether we're going to be within a dollar of what they are, I think is, is ludicrous when it comes to the price of gas and time and travel and all that. And, and we always, we always hear reports and every time I'm around the course I ask the question, what do you think of the course? And they, all the answers, men and men and women both and children, uh, think it's great. And so let's, we just want to keep it that way. All right. And just on a side note, Tim did have a volunteer party that was held last week, was it? Yeah, last Thursday night was well and, attended. Uh, to thank all the volunteers to make the whatever happens at Water's Edge happen, really. If it wasn't for them, we, we wouldn't be where we're at right now. All right, Marina Swales, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, okay, the, obviously the boating season is over. All the boats are in storage. Uh, boating season's over. Boats are uh, winter stored. I'm glad to hear you're getting calls for people about the uh, summer dockage already because I do want to work with you and Bob Lang on the rates for that, thinking about how we can incent people to stay both summer and winter. Yes. Some of the boats at the marina in the summer are so big we can't storm in the winter, so we can't penalize them, but we just want to get more people to stay summer and winter. Um, I did want to ask if you will comment sometime tonight about the lease situation with the restaurant at some point. Just so I, don't I don't think there's an update on that at all, right? Is there? No, um, I, I have left out the copy and then I pass that on to you and uh, Dale. Yeah, right now the question center is taken first when right there. Yeah. Um, the initial work's done. Everything, gone. just so everyone knows, the question center and the restaurant, it's the, it's the lease, the month by month lease from the last contract, basically. It just goes on both everybody agreed to that so that's what's going on until we iron this out until we renew it correct okay so it's month to month good correct um, we were talking to the chief of police here tonight earlier and, and through that discussion I'd like to make a request that uh, I'd like to have a security camera at least talk to you about putting a security camera at the marina we did have a break in last winter stolen merchandise, stolen property out of a boat. So if that's an option, the chief suggested it might be. I'd like to pursue that because security is always important down at the marina. We have valuable assets that our members keep there, and I'd like it to, to be as secure as possible. Well, on, that, on that note, I, I like that idea too. Can the gates be locked at all during the winter and just get a key from someone to go to the pro shop? Do those, both those lock, uh, gates close, the other one? They, we, they, Bob recommends closing the north gate, and we keep, try to keep that locked. Right, um, right. But we do have a lot of uh, public safety going through different levels of it, so, and they utilize that marina. I don't think they, we, we don't have a gate across the main the we main don't. entrance, but I think they like to get in there and look around along the river and those type of things. Well, it is, and it is public. Not the docks, but the uh, that area. Well, I mean, but we close it for the season. That's what I was thinking. You know what I mean? If we secured that location up, or at least at, at least at night. Right. It hasn't been a tradition to lock the main gate <coughs> over many years. But there's not even a gate there, though, right? No. Okay. So right. There's no gate. Okay. All right. So, I'm sorry. No, I'll that's go ahead. okay. Yeah, I mean, security is important, so I appreciate it. Um, yeah, the boating season's over, so that's about the end of my report. I did want to comment that, I don't know if it's the golf committee or rec committee, but the Christmas tree on the first tee at the golf course is gorgeously decorated. And that, I, I see that every morning. Yeah, and every every morning. Morning. It's beautiful. beautiful. It might be four, but you got it. Um, that was a Nats idea. And then uh, this year, Cody Nash and Brian uh, Payette are very... You know, they took their time to do it, but Maggie and Maggie Nash you can and, really see and Annette come on the bridge come on the island. You really are the overseers of that, and they make sure it's tweaked just right. How's so, that tree? That's those four is, that tree, is that tree healthy? What's that? Is that tree healthy? It's a very healthy tree. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, not. Don't let Bill hit with his golf ball. And I can tell you one. 
<laughs> I, 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 really, I can tell you one thing. It came up at the township board meeting on Monday as to uh, the kudos that went to to you and the team for that beautiful, beautiful yeah. tree, and that came from our township supervisor. And yeah, and those the, four people, the board really in general, care of it. was really, really impressed with it. Mr. Right. Chair, just final comment. Tim, you're right. We do need to do that walkthrough this fall. Yes, as best we can. We will. Thank you. I'm All available. Right. All right, thank you, Mike. Next week. All right, Centennial Farm, Billboard Ryan, please. Okay, I have no uh, Centennial Farm report at this time because we're still waiting on the lease. Uh, Officer Police Chief Porcerelli was here, and he had said, even though you have had, you said something about some vandalism there, he had mentioned that the Centennial Farm really is not a big issue as far as security and when there are problems they it's easy for them to drive through and flash lights so he really he was saying that he does not I got the impression that the Centennial Farm is not a big issue with vandalism right I think um, there has been some work done on that initial vandalism that was in the paper last week so I'm kind of waiting to get through that and yeah get a report back because there was people on site that made some reports and saw some people and so we're, I think we're on top. I know the police department is. So I think, yeah. I think that security light you put on the uh, <coughs> building finally had a lot to that do. That was your idea. Yeah, I know. But lighting <laughs> up that lighting up that back area was was very important. Yes. All right. So once the contract gets done, so like this though, but really the main things would be when when the weather breaks, you do your like a walk through right. around recreation, dog parks, all that kind of stuff. Right. right. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Airport recreation area, area. Uh, Myrie. Um, I have no additional updates besides what Tim's already reported. But on a side note, um, Tim, either I may have forgot this, but I got some information on the state's got grant money to plant trees. Did I send that to you? Or yes, did? I have that. Okay, okay. That's the annual thing. Right. Uh, it's yeah, I know it's twice a year. DTE does one, and then there's another. There's another oh, okay. Yeah, there's two of them. Usually, well, one right about now, and put them on public property, property, which would allow you to plant them on the golf course. No. We can't use them for golf. Okay, we tried it already. Yeah, but we got, we lost. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Right. Maybe try DTE. My maybe. bad. Well, what, what even here about Jaiwa and the football field? Any any feedback from that? Any I, feedback from Gila? The, the little that I've heard is it's all been positive. You know, okay. but I besides what Tim said, I really can't add anything to what he's already said. I expect them to get a hold of us, you know, here in the next couple months to prepare for, you know, this growing season and next fall. All right. So how do we know, how do, how do we feel about the relationship about them taking over the painting and and stuff like that, right? The, we're not doing the painting no more, right? We're doing the lawn cutting? We do the lawn care and lawn cutting. Okay. So how, was that a successful switch or what? I think it worked really good. Okay. Yep. All right, in the past, what we did was we did the field li uh, lining, mm -hmm. and then they did the, the, the lawn care and stuff, so we swapped it out and stuff, right? Yeah, I think the consistency of us contracting it out and working with, you know, Carl, you know, who's got the current right. contract, is working real well. Now, Jaira, they have um, porta potties there for the, for the kids and stuff like that during football yes. and stuff, mm -hmm. too, and, and Giza handle, handles it for soccer, correct? Right. Yeah. All right. Any questions about that? All right, senior citizens, yops. All right, moving on. Oh. Are you trying to get rid of me? <laughs> oh, I have very little tonight. The senior program participation is remaining about the same, and the people who have meals on wheels had quite a few concerns, but I understand now that the county has gone back to their former system and, and the food, food is good again, and so I hope everybody's happy. And Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you, Ethel. I have a question about the Meals on Wheels. How many Meals on Wheels do we provide for residents on this island? We have, Sue, I guess Sue, the other day we have 17 right now, but in the summer it went up to around 32, 32 addresses. 32 addresses, okay. So right now I think it's 17. It had dipped like uh, 13. Because I did hear some comments about that too, about there was some uh, trustee that mentioned about getting rid of, rid of the van and having a taxi cab. I don't know if this is true or not. Is this true? That it, he that was concerned true? about getting some prices on comparable price. What, get the best price for running the van per ride. Uta, can you comment on that? Is that true to that? Okay. But we're, we're okay. We're okay. We have our own van. Everything's good, right? Right, and we're working on 
Well, here's an example, and I don't mean to get into a lot. Of, there was a day last week where Sue was working with one of our people on the route. They really needed help. They had no family. It took her two hours to go into Kroger's, do the grocery shopping, come back, help the person, put the groceries on the cupboard, get in the van and come back. It took almost two hours. So I don't know how you you measure that. I mean, and well, a taxi company ain't gonna do that. No, no, it's a very unique system we have. We've been doing it for a long time, but def believe me, I want to get a better rate. And within the first couple months after we were talking about that, I think we're we're doing better. Okay. Hey, we'll see, and I, but we're, but we're I just have to be better prepared. At are the you meeting. comfortable with the subs subsidizing that we get from the county for what we do? I mean, of opting out of yeah, stuff, stuff like this. We just came to our department many, many years ago because we seemed like the one that could handle it the best because we're with, working a lot with the people. If the community would have stayed, if the community hadn't opted out and paid three hundred thousand dollars a year to be part of the smart program, I wouldn't have to worry about it. But the, our community opted out, Woodhaven opted out, Gibraltar opts out. So then we get a little bit of money, $10,237. This was well over a decade ago. As prices keep going up, we're still getting the 10237 So naturally, something's going to come out of the rec millage, and there's going to be a little extra effort on our part as a recreation commission. So there's all kinds of factors that go into it, but we're so close to our people, we continue to do it. But if some other department or if there was some funding that could help us, we'd be glad to do it. But I'm going to tell you, most of those communities that run the smart service or opt out even do it for three, four, five, six dollars a ride. All right. I now, mean, as far as the meals and wheels, you said 17 or whatever, 32 addresses, or whatever. <coughs> How many appointments does she really um, does she do a week? You think with the senior citizens, or for anyone for that matter, appointments, grocery shopping, shopping. Well, the meals are different. Right. Correct. And that's Monday through. Friday. Okay. The van could be sporadic. You know, right. it could be a bunch on Monday, none on Wednesday. So I'm going to say we're probably averaging. Boy, it's hard right now. I don't. I'm going to say between six and ten a week. Okay. Okay. Maybe more. I'd have to look at it, but I think that's what we're at right now. All right. All right. Any questions about that? Anything? All right. Schools, Conroy. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello, <laughs> hello. Wake up. Wake up. Yeah, I'm awake now. Well, uh, our winter sports season is in full swing. Uh, the boys high school basketball team is made up of a, a very good group from the football team, so hopefully the karma from the uh, football team will head into the basketball players. Uh, tonight is the high school Christmas uh, choral concert. And... Um, I think that's about it. All right. Any questions about schools? Uta. I, I actually don't have any question. Um, I noticed Agron hasn't been here for a couple of meetings, and I'm hoping that he'll be back. Uh, but I wanted to say regarding the high school students and in general our, our community school students, having just gone through the whole um, Boar's Head experience, we have a community of young people that have amazing talent, but also amazing fortitude. You know, those two weeks of rehearsals and performances at the end uh, are very, very demanding. And we have an adult choir and a children's choir. And I have to say, those children, whether they're 18 or, you know, 10, were amazingly well-behaved conscientious, hardworking kids. And um, it was just really a, a tribute to the parents and the schools that we can pull something like that off. You know, these kids were up till 11 o'clock every night and then going to school in the morning and still cheerful, well, maybe not first thing in the morning, but coming back to perform the next night, you know, just again, uh, full of vim and vigor. So, uh, our schools are doing something right, and our parents are doing something right. Well, could I add something to when, when I went over the, the programming? Every year for Island Glow, the marching band is there. Sometimes it's two degrees. And, right. But um, two bus loads from the marching band come in and are there, and they're very enthusiastic. Um, the Boar's Head, it's usually the Children's Choir, but it was the Boar's Head Choir, uh, John's White Barb and, and Dr. Parker. They did a wonderful job this year. And then the transportation staff, Who's bouncing back and forth between the schools and the Macomb areas? They're 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 really into it. They're pro community. So, 
the schools again you know that i should probably do more thinking of them we wouldn't have the rec program we have without you guys have a sound partnership though you and yes, the schools. yeah but they do so much that goes unnoticed all right well thank you all right playscape hainer magron Um, I've been able to speak with four of the committee members who were on the original Playscape committee, and all four agree there would be no problem with installing surveillance cameras. Uh, we what we would have to do is have signs posted, and then there's there is a procedure or whatever to make sure that they're done right and all that. Um, another common theme talking to to them is they agree what we need is a reintroduction to the Playscape. Because when it was built 20 years ago, a, a lot of kids helped. Well, now those children are adults. So a lot of the kids that are currently here on the island really don't have any that connection. So one of the ideas was to maybe do a, you know, start having just a welcome spring event, puppet show, some kind of activities right there that would draw families back to the place gate. Um, they all agree too, third, that cleaning up the area around the place gate would help. You know, Tim and I have talked, we're gonna get, make arrangements to have brush clear. Trees will be maintained, but a lot of that scrub and brush will be removed to make it more visible from the street. Um, and then last, the place gate, what they all agree is that they want the place gate kept. It was such a community event, so many people were involved, and really it has been maintained so well through the years, it really is not falling apart. Our, the, one of the biggest problems we've had is vandalism. So it's not things breaking, it's because of the way it was built, it's because people destroy things. So, um, and they all have very high kudos for Tim Rooney because it has been so well maintained. And and another thing is is an idea was presented to me was to maybe develop a five year plan for the playscape. See what we what we can do um, if there's any kind of projects, but we have to talk with the company that helped build it to see what we can do if there's any kind of modification because it has been grandfathered in and. Um, so, you know, it's it's a it's a good it's a good place. I it just we just need to get it back out to the community. And I think once it gets cleaned up, the area around it, and we maybe make some programs there. Hopefully, we'll turn it around. Yeah, you yeah, talk. Yeah, I um, thank you, Anne. Before the meeting today, um, one of our police commissioners actually wondered if we were going to bring up the topic of the of um, cameras, and one of, he didn't stay for the meeting. But uh, one of the things he pointed out: there is no light source at the playscape, and um, so it would be very difficult to you know to install cameras until we install a light source, and then that escalates into mm -hmm. other other things. So and in the past, what we had done is we had installed those bollard lights, and I think within less than a year, they were destroyed. And um, they were put in to mitigate vandalism, and they were the first thing that was vandalized. So um, I, think, I think the points you made about reintroducing and getting kids back into having an investment there is important. But I think we have to be careful about how much money or resources we allocate to some of this technology that may not, you know, I think we will need to study that and maybe talk with the police commission and or the police uh, department to kind of see are those things worthwhile. Because like at the Macomb Commons, there's light there. And so the, the camera at night actually picks up things. Do we want to go infrared? Well, that's expensive, and um, you could, you know, and and do people want light there? So it it, it becomes a bigger community discussion, I think, than um, us making a decision one way or the other. And then finally, um, an ongoing problem at Playscape is the bee situation, and I think that's 
that was really the beginning of the end for why people stopped coming with the younger children, why the, the you know, even as a, as a mom, young mom, I stopped going as it was just so intense with the bees. And Tim and the staff do a great deal to mitigate. It might be something we need to look at exchanging wood chips for another material or because the bees seem to be nesting in in the wood. And so we can't, we can't really get rid of them because the whole thing is, you know, so I think that's going to need some further investigation too. But I'm mm -hmm. glad the dialogue is starting and it's very exciting because that's the first step to bringing it back. All right. Very good. All right. Thank you. All right. Extended public comment. Any public comment? Anyone? Nope. You sure? Nope. Pardon me? Yeah, please oh, come here. Here. Oh. Your name? Brian oh, say, say it at the, at the microphone. Could the playscape be cleaned? Okay, name and address, please. Brian McGran. What street you live on? South Point. Thank you. Okay, now, can the playscape the please be cleaned? Yes. I think Tim does a cleaning every year, correct? Yeah, we power wash it every year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. What do you see? Just dirt and dirt and yeah. junk. Okay. Green, green stuff and that type of yes. thing. Okay. We'll take care of it. Thank yes. you. Okay. Thank you. You know that kid in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Individual commissioner comments. John Conroy. Any extra comments? Um, the, the wonder and the camaraderie and the spirit of Boris that, that, that should go into your own holiday and, and season at home. It really uh, it was an amazing, amazing show and the, the work and the time is beyond comparison for anything I've known. Uh, ping pong is going well. Pickleball is a blast. <laughs> I'm, I can't keep up with most of the people there. Cody is one of the Cody Nash is one of the better uh, players in there, <laughs> and uh, that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Merry Merry Christmas. Thank you. Apple Yops. And Margaret. Um, just I, I hope everybody has a great Christmas holiday. Thank you, Leah Shockey. Uh, same thing. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Bill Morrow. I just wondered if, uh, if I turn my microphone on, I could wonder out loud. Uh, I'd like to know if, uh, if John, Greg, and Leah could meet with me for just a couple minutes after this meeting. Um, let me know after we sign off. Because remember, he has no computer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Helena Ryan. I just want to wish everybody good luck, good health, and have fun in the new year. Thank you. Mike Swales? No comment. Thanks, Greg Murray? No O'Connor? I want to thank each and every one of you for giving the time and the energy, your expertise, and your knowledge to serve our community. I think this is one of the reasons a boar's head can happen. This is one of the reasons a playscape can happen. And I just, again, want to thank each and every one of you on this commission and all our I mean, obviously, all our township commissions. But the, our residents don't always realize that this is a volunteer effort and this is time away from home and family that you give freely to your communities. I, we give freely to our community. And um, I just want to take a minute to let you know that as a resident but also as an official, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Lee. Nothing. Happy holidays. All right. All right. I'd like to say Merry Christmas. Have a safe and happy holidays myself. And I want to say thank you to all you guys, too. You guys make this, you know, this commission rock pretty good. We do some good things. All right. With that being said, a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Bill Morrow, second. Aye. And all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Being adjourned. Thank you very much.